Hi, everybody. My name is Brooks Harp. I'm an undergraduate senior at FGCU. And for the past two years, I've been working on oyster larval dispersal and recruitment in the Clusatchee River estuary of Southwest Florida. So to provide a little background, the Eastern oyster makes up the oyster reefs we have in our area and they're extremely important to not only the environment, but to the economy as well. They're very good at filtering water and they actually act as natural nurseries for a lot of different species. Because of that, when we have healthy oyster reefs, we typically have healthy waters. But despite that, we have seen a not only a global decline in oyster reefs, we have seen a decline in this area as well. And while there's a few issues that have led to this decline, one of the issues that we're seeing as of late is some of these uh, extended water releases through S79 into the Clusatchee River estuary. And so in order to really understand the spatial and temporal variability of these oyster larvae while they're spawning in the Clusatchee River estuary and how that's being altered, we are came up with a field study to provide data for modeling techniques to come up with a model that is able to accurately map these patterns. So for the past two years, we've gone to these 11 sites, which have been grouped into four different categories. Zero and one are part of the Clusatchee River estuary. Two, three, and six are part of the San Carlos Bay. Four and five go up through Mount Lacerie Pass, and seven through 10 go upwards into the Pine Island Sound. And at each station, we deployed a PVC T-frame, and we would suspend three stringers with 10 shells apiece on, on each of them. And every other week throughout the spawning season, which is right around during the wet season, through, so May through October, we'd go out and we'd pull each shell off and we'd count for oyster spat. And this is one right here in this red box. And we would average that into spat per stringer. And while we're at each of these stations, we would measure the larval concentrations by taking a 10 liter water sample. We would run it through a 55 micron sieve we take those samples back to the lab, we would prepare them and under a dissection microscope, I would hand count the concentrations. So what we're seeing is we're seeing the Pine Island Sound actually receive some of the best larval supply, which is consistent with some of the flow patterns. But when we go to the spat settlement, we can see that Mount Lachey Pass and Pine Island Sound both have, have good success. And it's important to know there is a lag time between the spat settlement peak and the larval supply peak. And that's due to the fact that when the larvae are released while they're spawned, there's about a two week time frame while the larvae are developing and they actually have to develop a foot and be ready to attach. So these patterns are consistent with what we would expect. And we can tell that potentially the Pine Island Sound and Mount Lachey Pass are gonna be the most conducive for some of these restoration efforts, potentially even more so Mount Lachey Pass based on the fact that it has very good success compared to generally low supply. However, this data is not being statistically validated as of right now because this data is going to be used for a particle tracking model. And we're gonna put that particle tracking model on top of a hydrodynamic model, which we are creating, which is an entirely different presentation. But the end result is a model of an area such as this one, where we are able to drop these particles or larvae into the model and we can see exactly where they're traveling and in what time of year certain areas have the greatest amount of supply. And then we can check the water quality and we can see if just because there's a bunch of larvae in a certain area doesn't necessarily mean they're going to uh, have great settlement success. And we can actually go in and as well and simulate some of these water releases and we can show how that might uh, disrupt some of the natural patterns. Um, so that is the current plan as of right now. And thank you guys for listening.